everyone, it's great to have you back in the six steps of GIS problem solving. We were just talking about step three, which is very important, very time consuming, the collection and the creation of your data. It's only because you have a very crisp and clear, actionable question to answer or problem to solve that you were able to create a methodology to answer that question or solve that problem. Because you have the methodology, then you know what data is required, and then you collect or create that data, whether it's as simple as downloading it from some particular website or as complex as uh, organizing a complete expedition to a remote area with sophisticated equipment to create a particular data set. Well, now step four is the execution of the analysis. It is probably this step that people most think about when they think about doing GIS. This is where you're going to be sitting in front of a computer, probably clicking buttons, performing operations. However, remember that I said the collection and the creation of the data may take much longer than you're expecting. You have to be ready for that to take a long time. Once you get to the execution of the analysis, once you get to step four, you should have a crisp and clear question, a well-defined methodology, perhaps drawn out in this flow diagram that I recommend, and complete and accurate data that is necessary to use in the methodology that you designed. If you have those three things, it really is the case that almost anyone can sit down in the computer lab and get to the end of that procedure. This is the step where it's going to help the most to be familiar with the software package that was selected. That will be very important information to have here in step four. If you've got that, you've got everything else that's here, it may be the case, it may be the case that if you have everything prepared, like I'm recommending step zero through three, that by the time you get to step four analysis, it could go quickly. If you've spent the time up front to make sure you have the great question, the great uh, methodology, and all of the data aligns so that's exactly ready to go, it's often surprising how fast this step can actually go. I don't want to oversell that because I know that uh, everyone who does GIS is probably familiar with the time where they were sitting down to try to execute something and it just wasn't going right and it was taking a lot of time uh, that they weren't expecting. But it really is the case that if you have prepared yourself for this step the way that I'm recommending that you do, that this step could go quickly. It might go much easier, much faster uh, than you might be expecting. And it's certainly going to be many times less frustrating if you have all of this prepared than if you are the person that I was talking about much earlier who just has this vague idea, I want to do something on climate change, and they've downloaded some uh, data, who knows what it is, from the internet, and now they're sitting down and trying to click buttons and do something and hope that something uh, uh, appears on the screen that tells them something about climate change. That will never work. They're setting themselves up for frustration. If you are working through these steps, you won't have that kind of problem. So on one level, there's not a whole lot for me to say about the execution of the analysis. We're not at all right here talking about uh, particular buttons and particular software packages. Sure, I know that sometimes when you're doing GIS and you get to this execution that people have error messages, uh, people have things they have to work through in software and so forth, but that's not the hard part of GIS analysis. I try to tell people that really if your only problem is that you have some kind of error message that you don't currently understand in the software package that you're using, that is not a bad GIS problem to have. The bad GIS problems to have are I don't know how to design a methodology, step two. Uh, bad problems to have are I, I don't have the data, I can't collect the data, or uh, I don't know what data I need to collect, step three. That's a, a major GIS problem. Uh, if your only problem is I'm getting this weird error message, then you are really far along in your GIS project. If your only problem is I'm trying to do X, Y, and Z, and I'm getting this particular error message, we'll handle that. That's not a major problem. It, you know, some people who do GIS programming will create uh, scripts and programs to execute analysis. And then this could go very quickly. If you already have a program written up uh, for the procedure that you need executed, some people, by the time the data comes in and it's finally right and step three has been cleared, it's just a matter of loading in the data and running some kind of script. Uh, maybe it takes a little while, but then you go out for coffee or something and come back at the end of the afternoon and, you know, the analysis is complete. It may be the case 
case that you need to use something like a supercomputer or cluster computing or uh, a whole bunch of different servers in order to answer your question. And so you write some kind of script or program and load data on a, a supercomputer or something and then just wait for that to get processed. So all of those different kinds of things are the execution of the analysis. And when you do that, once you've actually completed that execution, you're done with step four. Once you have completed step four, you're going to have some kind of result that your computer system, whether it is your personal computer, whether it's a supercomputer, whatever it is, you're going to have some kind of result that it gives you. When you have that, you are ready for step five. And step five is review the results and revise as needed. You've got to take extra care and look at the result that this computer system has given you in great detail. Okay, remember a computer is going to sort of blindly follow instructions, right? So if there's some kind of problem, this is where you find it. I like to say that the first thing you do is look at what your computer has returned to you and just think, does this make any sense? Uh, maybe it does, but often, but it might not. If something has gone wrong, if you've hit some kind of button wrong, made some kind of mistake in the execution or whatever it is, you may get some kind of result that you go, whoa, 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 this just can't be right. This is clearly wrong. So you need to revise. This step is also where all of your other geographic knowledge comes into play because you're not just doing this analysis in isolation, right? You get, so you're doing some kind of uh, biological geography study of France, and you do all of this and you finally get the result from your computer system. Well, now you need to evaluate the result that computer gives you in the context of all of your knowledge about France and all of your knowledge about biological geography, right? So this is not just a technical enterprise. Yeah, we've used this technical uh, computer system in order to arrive at this particular result, but the only way that we can know what to interpret that, know that it makes sense, understand it, is to put that in context of all of the knowledge of your location that you're working in and also all of your knowledge about the particular theme that you're working in. If you don't have that, then you don't even know if the answer does make sense. That's why you can't just be a technical person. You can't just know GIS. If you are doing a GIS study of the biological geography of France, yes, obviously, you must understand GIS. But you also must understand France, and you must understand biological geography. It's essential. Those three parts of the triad go together, and they really unify uh, again here in step five when you're working on a GIS project. I remember at one time uh, when I was working, uh, I was uh, assigned a GIS project with a group of other guys. Uh, we were all GIS people. We all knew uh, how to work through these methodologies and execute analysis and so forth. And so we were working through these six steps. And we got to the end of step four when we had uh, executed the analysis and we had some kind of result back. But so then we looked at this result. We all looked at each other and said, so who knows something about this place? Does this make any sense? And as it turned out, none of us actually knew anything about the place that we were studying and executing this analysis about. So it, it's very, very hard. It is impossible, really, for us to look at that information that we got back from the computer system and beyond recognizing obvious technical errors, even knowing whether or not that result made sense in the context of the place and the theme that we were working on. So really it's my position that if you don't know information about the place and also the theme that you're studying, then you're not qualified to do the GIS analysis of that location. You have to know all three. Now it is the case that in some larger projects, all of that knowledge may be present but manifested in different people. If you're working on a project about the biological geography of France, for instance, it may be the case that one person on the team is a GIS specialist to make sure that all of the technical aspects of the project are done correctly, but then there will also be another person who is a specialist in France to make sure that uh, everything is happening and make sense within the context of France. And then there may be a biological geographer who specializes in that and manages all of that aspect. So it's possible that you could be working in an environment where that information is spread across uh, several different people. But if you don't have that knowledge at all, then you're, you can't go forward with the project. 
GIS is just a methodology that's going to allow you to get to certain results. It's going to be fantastic for solving certain kinds of problems and answering certain kinds of questions, but it's not something that can be done in isolation from all of your other thematic knowledge and all of your other location-based knowledge. You have to have all of those in order to go forward. Okay, well that being said, what if you evaluate the results that your computer has given you and it is uh, incorrect, there's something wrong, something's not right about it, you, weren't, you didn't get something that you were expecting, something went wrong. What happens then? Well, it is at that point that you begin to review all of the different steps that you worked through and you do that in reverse order. I want you to do that in reverse order. If you are getting some kind of result that's wrong, something that is unexpected, the first thing that you need to check is did the analysis execute properly? Sometimes it didn't. Sometimes you may have used a tool or an operation that you thought would do X, because that was part of the methodology, but it actually does Y. Oh, okay, so then it didn't execute correctly. I need to, to change the execution in this way. Or there's some other kind of problem with the execution that the methodology that for some reason didn't actually get implemented within the computer system. That's actually, if you're going to have a problem, one of the better problems to have because you can always get a little bit more training and execute that procedure correctly, re-execute that procedure correctly if that is the problem. If you are sure, if you're looking at the flowchart of the methodology and you look at the execution and th those line up that that is true, it executed the way that you were expecting, well then you go back and reevaluate step three. Uh, did I get something wrong? Did I get something wacky because my data wasn't as good as I thought? Or something was wrong some way, somehow with the data. Maybe I just had inaccurate data. Then you go back and check that. Okay, is it actually the case that everything that I created as far as data goes works the way that I'm expecting it to work? If that is the case, then you start to look at, okay, is the software package right? If you have the right software package, is the methodology correct? This is also obviously fundamental. You really don't want to get to the, to the end result and somebody say, oh, that's not right, and then look at your flowchart and go, oh, because this and this and your methodology is wrong. So you have to be very confident in your methodology. Then you go back to something like step one and go, gee, am I not sure whether or not this is correct because my step one, uh, my question, my problem was more vague than I thought and I'm having a very difficult time knowing whether or not the result that I'm getting from the computer system answers the question or solves the problem because I'm a bit vaguer on the question or the problem than I thought. See, that is a very, very bad problem to have. If you have a very vague topic, if you're not clear on your question, if you're not clear on your problem, you won't be able to know if the results you get back from the computer system actually answers that question or solves that problem because you're not really clear on what the problem was to begin with. See, that's why you want to be certain that you are very, very crisp on that very, very early on. And you can see that the further you have to go back to find the problem, the worse it gets for you. Because what if you do realize that, you know what, I, my problem was that my step one was not right. My, my problem was too vague. My, my question was undefined. Well, then you have to go back and define it and make it crisp and make it clear, which may require the complete revision of the methodology, probably will. When you revise the methodology, you may need completely different data sets. That may mean that you did not collect the right stuff when you were out in the field. It may mean that you actually do need to go out in the field. You may not be able to return because you didn't have, uh, don't have enough money or time or whatever. So that becomes, it becomes increasingly worse for you the further you have to reach back in the steps during this review phase. Hopefully, it's just a matter of execution. You don't want to have to go all the way back to something like step one that's disaster. So that's why I'm telling you that you need to go through these in order and make sure that every step is completely squared away before you move on to the next. Okay, then once you've found your problem, then you go back and fix it and you start working through the steps forward again. If the problem was that your methodology is wrong, then you revise the methodology. And then that means that you will have to reevaluate all of your data again, possibly create 
and uh, collect new data and then re-execute the analysis and so forth. Then you revise again. This is an iterative process. You execute the analysis, then you review and revise it. You go back to whatever step if there is a problem and then you move forward again. Review and revise again and go back up to the necessary step and keep going until uh, the answer and result that you get from your computer system is what you expect, what you need, and is correct. Once you do that, then you are finished with step five. And there are only six steps to this uh, GIS problem-solving procedure. So we will talk about step six in the next lesson.